We're just going to start from the absolute beginning where we're doing very basic pushing hands. Uh, to keep things so that it's easier to learn, uh, this is Vince. He's going to step forward with his right foot. I'm going to step forward, sorry, step back with my left foot. Um, I could step back with my right foot or my left foot and uh, I'll describe why you choose which foot to step back with later. But um, the first thing is he could try and trap me and stop me moving back by trapping my foot. So if he steps forward onto my foot, obviously it pays to, to move backwards with my left foot, otherwise it would have got trapped or trodden on. Just as a matter of interest, uh, in uh, Step Back to Reforce the Monkey in uh, Tai Chi, although uh, you're starting with your toe up, it's actually best to put your toe down and then lift the heel. And then the rest of the step backs are the same as lift the heel. Okay, So that when he steps on my foot, let's not put weight in it, just put a bit of weight in it, that's it. So it's dangerous to put weight in somebody's foot, but if, you know, if they're threatening to punch you or something, it might be a way of uh, making sure they're not going to be able to escape your uh, self-defense move. So if I lift a heel, it comes out easily. If I try and step back normally, rolling the toe off, I'm stuck. I can't do it. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why you step back. But you also step back by lifting the heel. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, this is now going to push my head. To keep it safe, it's, it's a good idea to start by trying to just push some of this head gently. I'll just show you. Just gently. Okay. Off we go. So, in that particular case, I could have just sat back without doing anything. I'll show you. Okay, we go again. Like that. As I sit right back here, it, it, although Vince has got longer arms than me, it's very difficult for him to push. He'd have to really turn and lean forward. Okay. So, <clears throat> obviously the best idea is to block it as well. And uh, if we do it again, please. I actually use both arms just to make sure. Now it's not force, I'm not trying to use force, it's turning moment from your centre of gravity, from your dantien, okay? And if I was to pull this way, his balance is weak. That's the void, if you go back please, it's, uh, this is the void where if you draw a right angle through his feet, the centre, from the centre line, that is the void. It's, uh, you can drop them into that space. So, pulling, will tend to make him easily fall forward, especially because his energy is already coming this way. So we'll just do it one more time. There. And later on I'll explain about how to manipulate their arm to pin them down or put them in their arm lock or whatever. Thanks. Now getting into actual pushing hands. Uh, go, go. Um, there, and then I'm going to put the hand near the centre line. And a lot of people, if you, if you do this, uh, start talking about what's on telly or don't focus the mind. So we're going to give you something to make you focus your mind at the moment. Now, we're not stiff, but we're not too floppy either. You've got to have that sense of keeping your body shape correct and um, just keeping a, a little bit of, uh, I won't say the word tension, but as if your hands are floating up underneath here. Okay. And also, don't let your arm fold too much like this, because you get pinned here. Then you can't move your arm. Again, later on, you can use that as a trap for them. But um, you sit back and turn in the waist. By moving your weight backwards and forwards, we're going to slow it down. We're actually pumping blood around the body with the legs. The legs have got little valves in, stop the blood pooling into your legs. So they pump blood up into the body. So we've got two pumps, the heart and the legs. Turning in the waist massages the internal organs. So it's great for your health as well. Now we're both drawing what's a horizontal ellipse here. I push towards his centre, he turns, so it's just going to miss his shoulder. So if I push in hard like that, it's going to miss. He then pushes towards me uh, face with the palm towards the, the other person and then sit back and face the palm to you. And again, for the health giving exercise, if I uh, talk to you about me, 
palm faces, I breathe in, sit right. I breathe out and push towards the in, out. Go to the person doing the opposite. In timing, you breathe out, breathe in. This hand is not frozen or stuck to your chest. Thank you, Vince. This hand is not stuck to your chest. Make it about a fist width from your chest. There. You don't want your arm to completely fold. That leaves it at about 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. And it can go a little bit less than 90, but not much. Otherwise, it will end up touching you, which means it's easy to trap. It buys you a bit of extra time if somebody tries to trap it to move the energy. And it shouldn't go straight either. It should always be curved. So if you make a circle, the best you can as you look at it, like that, like that, then <clears throat> that is the perfect shape for this arm when you first contact. Okay, so we do it again. So notice how I use both arms to block his hand. It touched his elbow. We're going to use that more in a moment. Now Vince could try and trap me. If you push it across this side, that's trapping. Okay. So this will keep you awake. It stops you from nodding off or talking about what's on telly and that kind of stuff. It, the idea is to uh, keep alert and feel what's going off with your wrist. So even if you do it with your eyes closed, you know what was happening. So Vince is at a random going to try and trap it across. When you're doing it with a partner, if the partner makes it obvious that they're going to try and trap it that way, but if you feel that it's getting pushed this way, even if they're not trying to trap you, if you feel it's getting pushed to this side, take it that side, you'll see why in a moment. Okay, if you want to do that again, Vince. There. Now here, that can go here. Vince could stop it with that hand, but you've got both hands. So, there. Okay, so that's looking at the self-defense side, but to keep pushing hands flowing, this is quite difficult to get, so take your time and learn it. You know, if it takes a week to learn, it takes a week to learn. Here we go again. So, go again please. I'll explain what we're going to do as we do it. Okay, we'll have to sew right down. This is going to trap it. There, I'm going to hit in like that. He's taking it across, and the other arm is going under both arms. Let me just uh, make that clear both arms. He turns a little further. There and I, I'm now in in a bit of a unbalanced state. If he tried to pull me that way, I could possibly resist and I could snatch free. But if he just uses this arm to nudge my shoulder that way, the balance is terrible that way. Again, we're in the void. So as I said earlier, between both feet, there's always this void at right angles. The balance this way in particular is bad. That way, not too good. This way, it's not it's not bad at all. Okay, but often you're being pulled, so you tend to be extended a bit. So it's still not perfect, but it's as best you can get in that direction. Okay, so we'll do it again. There, he came under with both arms. Now we can continue, this makes it a, a, a continual movement. So if you push, there, okay, put your hand in the center, sit, good. Now this feels a little bit uh, more awkward, mainly because you've got to be able to flex quite a lot in the waist. So this will build up your the suppleness of the back muscles and really help your spine and your back muscles. Don't overdo it. Don't go too far. Can we just do it again, please? There. If I go any further now, obviously with a pull that way, 
if possibly could tear my back muscles. I've been doing this for years, so it's not likely to with me, okay? But if you've not been doing it for years, it is likely to, so don't do it. So when you get to there, start to sit back, don't go any further, and then it continues this ellipse here. Try and do the turning in the waist, and only turn so that hand would miss your shoulder, just miss your shoulder. Unless you're gonna pull them off balance, in which case you pull further, but it won't come easily this way, but then you knock him that way. Notice I used near the elbow. If I used just the elbow, it could skid over the top. That bit sticks, and it sticks in the valley. This valley is between this muscle and this muscle. There's a, a, a valley here. You push into that, they tend to go. You can push down. You can trap that foot. You can do an awful lot, okay? Thanks, Vince. Now I'm going to explain, when you do the changeover, you actually need to sit back a little bit further. So never go your full distance back when you're doing the uh, single hand pushing hands. Uh, you go back, I do it until my centre of gravity is aligned with the centre of the back foot. So if we do it again, if you push forward, Vince, here, I sit back, my centre of gravity is in line with the back centre of the back foot. I've turned until this hand, if you push him further and harder, it's just going to come to my shoulder, just on the outside. So I'm not already right back here, but I could be if I wanted to pull, sit back further to my limit, that's my limit, okay? When I actually pulled him, I let myself come forward a tiny bit as he came this way. The slight knock that way is terrible into that valley. Okay, that's what we've explained so far. So remember, you only turn enough to make it miss your shoulder. There's no point to turn it any further. Also, when you're swapping hands, you need to go that little bit further back. So you need to have that ability to go a bit further back and turn a bit more. Okay, so we're going to slow right down. And Vince, uh, when you're practicing with a partner, do the change of hands slowly to start with. So we're going to slow it down, okay? Palm towards me when you push. Palm towards me when you push. Somewhere between the second and the fifth or sixth push, Vince is going to obviously change to the other side. I come there, I push, he sits back, okay? Vince is going to do the next change as well. Vince is going to do, I'm going to do the next change as well. We're going to take it in turns, I'm now going to do a change. I'm going to push it across, he sits back a little further, turns a little more, so I'm a bit open here, pushes towards me. I guide it to one side as sitting back. Get this wrist here, and we're back to the same hand that we started with. So now we're going to slow down. Now it's uh, Vince's turn to take it across the trap. I come underneath. I turn a little bit further, sat back a little bit more. Then I push forward. Vince guides it to the other hand. This is how you can continue pushing hands, otherwise it's just going to be a fight. Okay, so we want this to be a good health exercise, but keep your mind alert by knowing that they can trap you any time or try to. Okay, so I'm now going to do it to Vince. That's trapping. Notice I could put that there to help keep me safe, okay, but he pushes forward. I've got to come with both hands to here, and then we've changed over. So this is a way of keeping you alert, okay? So it's my turn to trap. Yes. Okay, so I'm slowing down so you can see it clearly. Now it's Vince's turn to trap.
Before we go any further, uh, Tai Chi for Health, uh, it's a good idea to know when you're upright. If you watch closely, neither of us are actually upright. They're slightly curved. Uh, I mentioned this in other videos, but it's called the six bows. The arms should be curved, the legs should be curved, they're never straight, and also your spine should be curved, but in two dimensions. Both this way by pushing this bit back, tucking the coccyx under, that's the lordosis. And you grow out of that, so you end up straight when you're forward, but then sink back into it. Grow. See, but you're growing from the centre, but you also do it in this dimension, like you're hugging a tree. So you push from that, grow, and then settle back. Grow. Settle back. So I've got the two dimensional, this dimension, and this dimension, the letter C here, and hug a tree here. When I push, you can just there. Uh, when I push, I'm pushing from that six bows, stored energy in the spine. Try and imagine you're connecting the energy through your arms, through the middle between your shoulder blades. So that's drop, push your spine back a little, and your shoulders forward a little. I'm exaggerating so you can see it clearly, but it's only small and you can grow from there. So you've got the legs pushing, the spine pushing, the hips. Don't try and push with your arms so much. That's just a weak part of your body compared to the rest. So now you'll notice now I'm brushing his elbow as he pushes past. This is going to get into um, the second part of pushing hands one. All this is horizontal circles, okay? Now, if I use both hands to pin him across, he can come under the whole lot. He comes under the whole lot. It actually makes it an easier turn, changeover. He pushes. I'm going to do it again slowly. I'm going to do all the changes. So if I try and track Vince across with both hands, he does that. You see, I'm in danger now of avoiding this way. I'm in danger of being pulled off balance. But in order to keep the pushing hands flowing, he's just going to push forward. So you form the bow, I'm exaggerating it so you can see it grow out of it. So here I'm straight. Of course this knee's still bent. So we curve, straighten rinse, curves here, straighten there. Is it my turn to change? Okay. There's the changeover. That's how we swap. Notice I'm brushing the elbow now. Obviously that is so, if you push forward and then if I do this, he can charge in with the elbow here, okay? If I don't have my hand on it, just, just walk forward or anything right there, Vince. I'm in trouble of getting, well, you can see I'm not in a good place. If you put your foot back. If this hand's here, what you do is you don't fight against the actual force this way, Fight against it at right angles. Okay, if you know anything about vectors, you want the vector to be opposite to this vector. So this vector is coming this way, force coming this way. I'm going to roll it up. So if you push forward, okay, now he can't get me. Okay, I can get him, but he can't get me. Obviously, if you try and spin and hit me with this one, but you don't need to do much to stop that. Okay, if I roll that that way, it really tends to. Put them in a mess. I would drag him this way to put him down, okay? We're not going to show you any of that stuff because uh, it's not nice for him and it's not nice for me either. So, but you can do all kinds of things with this, okay? 